Cthulhu, I know, I know, I know, but I promise, I promise, I promise it's the last one for today, okay? I promise, let's do this. All right, here we go. Ah, all right, all right, all right. Okay, let's do this, come on, come on, come on. This squid boy needs a new set of tentacles. Let's do it. Ah. What? what the fuck? Cthulhu, what the fuck did we... What the fuck did we just win? Look at them. That's what we won. What? Come on. Gambling. <laughs> I know uh, that's how we're opening up this video is by talking about gambling. Look, gambling is a dangerous and addictive thing, but you know, like every other dangerous and addictive thing, uh, gambling is a billion dollar industry that shows no signs of stopping. It's it's scary, right? You know, a lot of people can fall down a gambling a gambling hole and it's it is scary. So it's really nice to see that the video game industry has taken very staunch stands against gambling, right? You can't gamble online anymore. It's all, they have been very, very peculiar about what can and can't be in video games. So what if a game had gambling mechanics, right? Was as addicting as gambling. Uh, and, and like, okay, besides loot boxes, right? Um, what would that look like? Okay, okay, you know, besides like, like gacha games, right? What would gambling in video games look like? Um, okay, all right, besides whatever EA is doing with FIFA, okay? All right, besides all of that, what would a video game look like if it used gambling tactics in a non-predatory way? I mean, you've already seen the title of the video. You already know what it's about. <laughs> Vampire Survivors, a $5 indie game developed by one guy. <laughs> Italian designer, and I'm sorry if I butcher this, Luca Galante? started designing Vampire Survivors because he wanted to manage a community based on his past experiences as an admin for the Ultima Online servers. But that's according to Wikipedia, I mean, I'm gonna assume it's true. <laughs> His inspiration for designing Vampire Survivors was a mobile game by the name of Magic Survival, which is hilarious because Magic Survival is a game I have had installed on my phone for, for years. I love this game, and clearly he does too, and I think that's really cool. Vampire Survivors consists of one character moving along the screen, automatically fighting enemies around them, collecting power-ups and bonus weapons, and just getting awesomer. It's a pretty cool game. Okay, but Luca had an ace up his sleeve. You see, he used to work as a developer in the gambling industry. So he knew that the flashing lights and colors and sounds and all of the things that come in a slot machine kept people invested. He knew how to make an addicting flashing color system for slot machines. So he took these ideas and he used them to make this $5 vampire slaying roguelike that has absolutely dominated the indie game space for almost two years. Uh, photo sensitivity warning, I'm not joking here. Cthulhu, show us vampire survivors. Being the fifth highest rated game on all of Steam behind Portal 2, Terraria, Stardew Valley, People Playground, then it's Vampire Survivors, and this game is fresh. It is so good, but what makes it so good? Because on its surface, it's incredibly simple. There's no buttons, there's no combos, there's no intricate combat system. All you need to play it is your mouth. Well, you don't, okay, don't play it with your mouth, play it with your mouse. Good Christ, this video is a disaster already. So if it doesn't have the intricate combat loops of other roguelikes like Hades or Risk of Rain 2 or Slay the Spire, so what makes it so simple if it could only be played with your mouse? Well, like we have seen over and over and over again in the indie scene, Vampire Survivors boasts a very simple gameplay loop with very simple mechanics. However, a game that has extraordinarily simple features opens itself up to a vast amount of depth that is just 
asking to be broken. With a total of 57 playable characters and dozens upon dozens of different weapons and relic combos that can all be evolved and combined with one another, and 12 maps that all have different strategies and enemy varieties, and a bunch of these relics characters and maps are hidden somewhere in the game and need to be found or unlocked or you have to finish challenges to complete them the game on its surface has a lot of content to actually play however when you actually play it you are walloped in the face with what is a disgustingly addicting and captivating game. You see, games only last 30 minutes maximum, but there are some settings and some maps that will set your time to only 15 minutes. So on the surface, it looks like this game is designed to be picked up, uh, played for a little bit, put down, and then you kind of just return to it every now and then. That's kind of how a lot of roguelikes are. You just kind of enjoy the gameplay loop when you feel like it. But holy shit, man, I have never played a more addicting game. The phrase, ooh, just one more, just one more time. I'm only gonna do one more round. I'm only gonna play one more time. I think I, I, I'm only gonna have to play once, only one more time, and then I'm done for the night. I promise I'm okay. I, I have never uttered <laughs> that phrase more about any game I have ever played. This game is the epitome of just ending a run and going, well, I have to do it again. I have to do it again. I, I just, I have to play another game. I, I have to. It begs you to start another round immediately after you just finished the round. And that is because the game has this sweet, sweet dopamine drip, like a fucking hamster's water well. You're just like, please, I'll make my brain feel a little bit a little bit better. I can't, I don't know if you can tell, but I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. Jesus Christ, this video is chaos. The game is paced beautifully because over the course of those 30 minutes that a game takes place, your hunter goes from this slow, weak, pitiful one weapon loser into an absolute vampire slain force of nature. <laughs> the particle effects and the enemy count on screen only go to bolster that power fantasy you're feeling because even though this game is a pixelated like 2D style roguelike, I remember how I said that Luca used to work in like the gambling industry and he kind of knows how like the lights and shit he just knows how to keep you staring at the screen let me let me show you <laughs> so by the end of the game in like the last five minutes of a vampire survivors game you can't see Jack Shit! The game, the entire screen, in fact, is filled with enemies and weapon effects and lights and colors and explosions and particle effects. The game is absolute chaos by the end. And every time you pick up an upgrade chest in the game, you are smacked in the face with one of the most slot machine ass looking animations I have ever seen. <laughs> I mean, look at it. Look at it. This is a slot machine. This is a slot machine. And we've seen these kind of animations before. When you think of like Overwatch loot boxes, when you think of loot boxes in general, they are designed to have a flashy, exciting animation that shows you a hint of like the rare shit you've gotten, right? The Overwatch loot box bursts into a golden light and you know you have a rare character. It gets you going. It wants you to go, oh, what have we got? What have we got? And wants you to buy another one. Vampire Survivors takes that philosophy, but puts it in a single player roguelike that's only $5. It asks nothing of you. It just puts that into the game because it's fun to pick up a chest and go, Holy shit, I got giga upgrades. <laughs> the chests have different animations and different effects depending on the rarity of chests you picked up. Look, Vampire Survivors is an anomaly. It was made by one dude. It was a passion project by one guy who wanted to make something so that he had a community of people. He wanted to build something that brought people together. And so he looked at his history in the gambling industry and used the philosophies that gamblers 
or that gambling products use to target gamblers and he put those in a game that's not predatory. This game isn't like $90 and asks you to pay $5 every time you play. This game is a one-time purchase of $5. Or if you play it on mobile, it's just free. And yet it is so much fun because it treats the players like players. It gives them an experience for a really good price and it just keeps them coming back because it is designed in a really captivating and addicting way but not in a predatory addicting way in like a just you want to keep playing kind of way you want to unlock all of the characters you want to find all of the secrets and there are a fuck ton of secrets you want to find all of the different combinations of weapons you want to find all of the shit that this game is keeping from you by just playing the game and that is such an old school philosophy and i think that's the reason this game has gotten so popular is because it is a cheap game giving you a massive massive experience i know some streamers or youtubers that have played like thousands of hours of this game it has spawned challenge videos like people being able to beat the entire game by not moving by standing in one place it has been an absolute gaming phenomenon because of what it is the passion project of one dude and the team that he was able to hire because the game was so popular and blew the fuck up <laughs> I don't really know if there's like a theme or like a point to this video. I just am really captivated by the idea that Vampire Survivors is such a special game and I have yet to show it to somebody who hasn't immediately gone, oh yeah, oh uh, no, that's, that's awesome. It, because even when you have nothing unlocked, it is a really good loop. And did I mention that there are two DLCs for this game? Each are like $1.99 a piece. So for less than $10, you have a fuck ton of content. One DLC is inspired by like Japanese mythology. Another one is inspired by like European folklore. It is so cool. What this game has in the community that it's built, it is the best fucking game to play on Steam Deck. And if you want to hear more about me talking about how awesome this game is on Steam Deck, go check out this video or wherever it is on screen, click the thing and it'll take you to that video. <laughs> Look, like I said, this game is just crazy. And it really feels inspirational because this is one dude who has shot himself to the top of the Steam charts. That's like the fucking Stardew Valley guy who's number three on the list. One dude made this crazy ass game that took off Indie games are super special because they show us people who are just really creative and passionate and are really good at executing their ideas very well. Vampire Survivors is this special anomaly in this colorful gambling style game that is non-predatory in any way. It just asks you to play it a lot because it's fun and that is something that's just really cool and should be admired by the gaming community more i'm just making this video to, to to show you vampire survivors not like you haven't probably heard of it already because the game is fucking huge but it's special it's really cool and i i think it is a very inspirational piece of art and that's just cool. I like stories like that. So Luca, Luca Galente, um, Galente, I, I'm so sorry for butchering your name. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, but thank you for such a sick video game. Thank you for an experience that is so addicting, so easily accessible, so engaging to explore and play. That's special. So if you guys haven't played Vampire Survivors, you should go play Vampire Survivors because fuck it, it's $5. It's $5 and apparently you could spend a thousand hours in that game because why the fuck not? How the fuck do you play Vampire? No, I know exactly how you play Vampire Survivors for a thousand hours, but that's just absurd to me.